DNA Center. Most people can log into a portal, click a few things uh, pretty easily, right? But not everyone can use a REST API, which is what we're doing in this nugget. So instead of using the GUI to interact with DNA Center, we're going to use DNA Center's exposed REST APIs to look at a few things. Let's dive in. Now this is the interactive part of our adventure. Um, I think it'd be cool for you to access DNA Center right now. So if you go to developer.cisco.com, which is where I'm at, you can set up an account or you can log in via your GitHub credentials, whatever, they got a few options. And once you're set up, you'll see a page like this and then we'll mosey on over to discover and go to the sandbox remote labs, which are so killer. I'm gonna jump into the networking section. Boom, uh, for some reason I still have to click on networking. <laughs> and um, I mean, there's the always on lab right there. Um, there's actually a newer version of it. I'm going to use the newer version, let me see. I'm gonna go to the all here, look at all the labs. And yeah, yeah, there's a dot 10, which is newer. And they actually have a few DNA center labs because I guess they're getting overrun with all you folks trying to learn it. So uh, I'm gonna click on this guy here. And all we want to do is get access to the sandbox. Now I could just log into the GUI by going to this web address and it'll take me right there. Welcome DevNet, I was already logged in. Um, or I can just take this URL and launch Postman and get to work. Um, there's my username and password. All set, you can do the same thing, it's so cool. Let's do it! But before we can actually interface with the API, we need to look at the API documentation to see how they do things. Because if it is a true RESTful API, they'll have it clearly documented. Remember, uniform interface. And I've got it pulled up right here. Um, the first thing we have to do to interface with our API is to authenticate ourselves. We will use the username and password to authenticate, but we'll do it to get a token. Remember, APIs, it's like playing an arcade game. You need that token, so we'll authenticate ourselves using a password, and then we'll get our token, which we'll use that token to then do any other thing we have to do. So I'll click on this, and this tells us what to do. Cool, we'll walk through each step. So in Postman, I'm gonna set up a new request, which by the way, Postman's completely free, go download it. It's available for like every platform, including web-based. So according to the API, I need to, let me zoom this up here. Look at this URL, that resource. And in front of that will be my actual, you know, host. So uh, let me go grab that IP address stuff or URL. I'll take that, throw that into Postman, and then I'll get my URL from the API and put that right after. Cool. So that's how I'm gonna get my token and the uh, the HTTP verb, the method, uh, because verb is what we do. I'm going to be posting it. Cool. So I'll change that to post. But I'll need some headers. Right now I've got nothing going on. Um, so according to this, it wants a content type of JSON. So I'll do that. So it needs the content type. And it's looking for JSON. Cool. It also wants an authorization header with my username and password. I can uh, do that by going to the authorization tab in Postman and uh, doing basic authentication or basic auth. And this is where I can put my username and password. I've already got it in here from practice, so I'll uh, leave it there. <laughs> and we'll uh, go ahead and send this. It should work. Send. Ah! And there's my token. Very cool. So now that I have my token, I can go and do anything, really, or well, whatever I'm authorized to do. Let's go look at some stuff in the API documentation. As you can see, I can do a lot of stuff. Uh, I want to do something just simple but fun. Uh, let's see. I don't care about sites. Let's look at devices. Um, oh, we can get a device list. That would be fun. So I'm going to take this and get a device list. And notice that the verb will be get. So I'll change it to, let me do a new one here. It's already a get. And then I'll have to make sure I'm using my host. So I'll put my host right before that resource. Okay, so cool. Here's my host portion. And then there's my resource. I'm getting a list of network devices. Now I know that I'll also need some content type of JSON on this request. And the way I can use my token is by uh, putting in this header. It's going to be x dash auth ah, auth dash token. That's the key. And then the value for this will be my token. So I'll go grab it from over here, copy that bad boy, and paste it here. No quotes. Cool. And uh, I think I'm ready. I'm going to get me a list of network devices from DNA Center, which is kind of neat. Uh, and send. And it looks like it was successful, even though this first message is a little scary. Uh, <laughs> I got a status 200 okay, so we're good. That's a positive, successful message. And um, let's see, look at my JSON. There's a lot of stuff in here. 
First, I got information from a 3504 wireless LAN controller. Um, I can see that I got a Catalyst 9300 switch. Neato burrito. And it's giving me a ton of information. Look at all these key value pairs. So cool. Look at all these devices. Like, there's a ton of devices in here. Oh my goodness. Oh, look, there's an access point. Man, this goes on forever. Let's try one more thing. Um, I found one. Uh, get all interfaces. That'll be a fun one. Let me, uh, come on, let me grab it. There we go. <laughs> Damn it. Give it to me. Okay, this, this thing's being stubborn. Got it. Okay. <laughs> All right, so let's try this one out. I'm going to replace this with this. Oh, got too many forward slashes. And um, make sure all my headers are good. Yeah, I haven't changed the headers, so the token should still be good. It will expire. So every once in a while, the token will expire. You'll have to get a new one, um, but we should be good right now. So let's get a list of interfaces. Go. Dead gum. Oh my gosh. That's a ton of interfaces. Look at all this stuff. So neat. But you see, like before, when we were uh, messing with JSON and uh, the REST API, we're looking at one device. And we could have you know, looked at multiple devices, but interfacing with a controller like this, um, we can look at so many things. And the controller can do a lot of stuff too. So just being able to interface with the controller's features is one thing. And then interfacing with all the devices he controls is, uh, oh, it's, oh yeah. <laughs> I've been scrolling for a while and I haven't reached the end. There's a lot of interfaces on the sucker. Oh, there it is. I reached the end. Now that was just one example of interfacing with that REST API. We just got a list of devices and we got a list of interfaces, cool stuff. Um, I highly encourage you to go and just play around with it. Try to filter out some of those results, um, play with the JSON uh, from what we learned in the JSON skill. But I wanna leave you off with one note about DNA Center. And it's kind of a big note. DNA Center is pretty game changing in one more way. And that is the DNA Center platform. I was at Cisco Live when they announced the DNA Center platform, and I got a chance to walk around and talk with uh, some of the vendors who developed for this and got to hear what they did with it. And I'll touch on what that means here in a moment, but this might look familiar. So this is DNA Center, um, and kind of the middle would be it's the, the controller. This right here represents the northbound interface, the NBI, right? We talked about that. And then this right here represents the SBI, southbound interface. Now notice it, it calls it a multi-vendor SDK. Why? Well, because with DNA Center and it being open, developers can now develop SDKs that allows DNA Center to interface with other devices that are not maybe Cisco related. Um, so for example, I was talking with some uh, some vendors there at Cisco Live, and they have DNA Center configuring, shh, don't tell Cisco, uh, they're configuring Juniper devices. If you don't know who Juniper is, good. No, it's one of the biggest competitors to Cisco. They make some okay, so, some solid networking devices, but they're using a Cisco platform, DNA Center, to configure Juniper, manage Juniper, and there are SDKs for a lot more. So that opens the door to a lot. And now we're dealing with a full compass because we're not, we don't just have a north and south uh, bound interface. We now have east and west. I guess I should put an E there and a W. And this is just Cisco talk. I don't think it's like a, a industry standard. However, um, DNA Center refers to their eastbound stuff as like uh, events and notifications. So like if some telemetry, telemetry, what's going on with your devices? Events, kind of like think SNMP. Whatever happens inside your, your DNA Center, you can kick that off to another system. It could be something like Splunk, which is a tool that takes just a ton of data and helps you parse through it. So that's one example. And then on the West side, we have integration with APIs. Uh, and one I wanna focus on is an ITSM. And I got to see an example of this and it was so cool, but one of the biggest ITSMs, if you don't know what they are, um, it's basically like a, like help desk ticketing. So if someone like is like, oh, my computer doesn't work, they'll put a ticket in. And one big software application out there is called ServiceNow. Now they do more than that, than just help desk ticketing, but that's one primary example. But I saw an integration with ServiceNow, how it integrated with DNA Center's API. And this workflow happened and it's, it's kind of crazy. Basically there was an issue with the network. No one had realized it yet, but DNA Center caught it. Uh, DNA Center talk with ServiceNow automatically opened a ticket. <laughs> DNA Center opened a ticket. And um, then the help desk person could go look at that ticket in service now and go, huh, that's an issue. And then they could say, you know what, let's go ahead and let DNA Center fix it. So in service now, they could click fix and service now would communicate back with DNA Center. DNA Center would apply the network fix because it has assurance and it knows what to do. Um, it fixes it, kicks back to service now saying, oh, it's fixed. The help desk guy can go, oh yeah, DNA Center fixed it done without anybody knowing about it. 
<laughs> with, without anybody freaking out. It was so, and, and, and having the help this guy is not required. Like DNA Center could open a ticket, resolve it, and then close the ticket. It's just like a, a proof of something happening. It's crazy. <laughs> so DNA Center platform opens up the door to so many things. DNA Center isn't just for managing Cisco devices. It can be a lot more. And I wanted to kind of paint that picture before we left. If you want to know more about this, if you want to dive deeper into all the programming stuff, uh, the DevNet Associate might be a really good next step for you. Um, if not, go into the CCMP Encore, you'll get more information on all this stuff and then even the specialization, the automation and concentration, uh, either of those steps will get you more information on this stuff and it's, it's really fun. So in this nugget, we saw how we could um, interface with DNA Center via the REST API. We used a popular tool called Postman that allows us to test APIs. And then we learned a little bit about DevNet platform, DevNet, the DNA Center platform, which opens up a whole gambit of things. Uh, you can pretty much integrate anything with Cisco DNA Center, which allows you to pretty much integrate anything into your network. Kind of crazy. Oh man, I hope this has been informative for you. And I'd like to thank you for viewing. <laughs>